Hey everybody, um, so I've been asked to make a tutorial about how to solve the question from this week's quiz in class project. Um, so I wish I'd actually made the tutorial while I was making the game, but um, I will do it now very quickly and hopefully this will be useful to some of you. I'll just work through all the instructions and show what my thought process was as I did it. Um, so at the beginning, use only one game functions actor. The reason why I put that in there is some of you uh, were using multiple game functions actors when you wanted there to be multiple game functions. The idea of game functions is a place to put all of the behaviors that aren't associated with a particular actor uh, who's involved in the game um, or in whatever it is that you're creating. So there's really usually no need to create multiple game functions actors. Sometimes it's useful to do so, um, but in this exercise I wanted you to concentrate on just having a single game functions actor. Uh, so the hero on the left can move up and down and shoot three bullets at a time. So here's my hero. Shrink him down in size a little bit. And nothing spawns him. I just drag him directly onto the screen. Well, that's too small. Let's go a little bigger. And he moves up and down and shoots three bullets at a time. So that's pretty straightforward. Rules, key, I'll use W for up. And I'll use the move behavior to move at 90 degrees, speed of 100, and copy this and use S to move down to 170 degrees. And I will group these into move rules and check them up and down, lovely. And uh, I can shoot, so I need a bullet. I'll make the bullet, say, 10 pixels wide and 2 pixels high. And create a new rule, new key rule. I'll shoot with the space bar, and that will just spawn my bullet actor. And also the bullet should be moving, so I'll use a change velocity to move that bullet to the right, and I should be shooting. Now, in my example, I actually had the bullet come out of the mouth because I thought that was more fun. Um, so I'll actually spawn these slightly lower than the center of the actor. Let's try five pixels below. This is coming out of the nose. Let's try seven pixels below. Now the bullets are shooting out of the mouth. That's cool looking. Uh, now the trick in this one is shoot three bullets at a time. So that means I need to keep track of the number of bullets. Um, and since that is an attribute that is going to be changed by the uh, hero when he shoots a bullet and also changed by the bullet when the bullet is destroyed, I'm going to make it a game level attribute so that all of my actors can access it. It's an integer because it's a a whole number of bullets on the screen and I'll call it bullet count and every time a bullet is created I'm going to change my bullet count to my bullet count plus one. And every time a bullet is destroyed, which I haven't built yet, I will decrease that bullet count. And 
I want to augment my rule here. Not only do I want the bullet to shoot when the space bar is pressed, but also I want it to only shoot when the attribute game bullet count is less than three. So now I should be able to shoot three bullets, but no more. And since these bullets never die, I'll never be able to shoot again. So uh, now I have to think about how to kill these bullets. Well, I can make a wall, put it on the screen, put it just off the right edge of the screen, and I can say to the bullet, when you collide with the wall, then destroy yourself. But just before you destroy yourself, change the bullet count attribute to bullet count minus one. So when I create a bullet, the bullet count goes up. When a bullet's destroyed, the bullet count goes down. So now I can shoot three and shoot three again. And as long as there's no more than three on the screen, I can keep shooting. Great. Satisfied. Um, bullets are destroyed when hitting aliens or leaving the screen. Red aliens are destroyed by bullets. Okay, so I guess we need a red alien. So let's go to our images and make a red alien. So there's our alien, call him red. And to make a white thing red, and most of you got this, I'm gonna remove the green and the blue. Now I have a nice red alien. Let's see here, red aliens are created as follows. Every three seconds, a red alien is created at the right center edge of the screen. Okay, that's easy enough to do. So I'm gonna, to make my life easier, I'm gonna put my game functions. Let me give game functions a color just so we can see it. I'm gonna put my game functions at the right edge of the screen. That makes it easy to spawn my alien at the right center edge of the screen. So game functions will say timer every three seconds spawn a red. Now, uh, since my red actor is not interacting with the wall, I could spawn him in the same location as game functions, but eventually I know that I'm going to want my red actor to be destroyed by the wall over here, so I'm going to spawn my red actor uh, a little bit to the left of my game functions. Let's see how that looks. Uh, so this is pixels to the right, a little bit minus 40. So now my red actors will come into being 40 pixels to the left of my game functions actor every three seconds. And I do know that I want my aliens to accelerate towards my hero. So every three seconds, I should get a red actor accelerating towards my hero. Great, red actors, red aliens, too big. So let's go in and knock down the size to 50 by 50 pixels. Lovely. So looking back here, one second later, a second red alien appears 100 pixels above the first alien. And then one second later, a third red alien appears 100 pixels below the first alien. Um, so this is interesting. Um, there's a couple ways to solve this problem. I'll just 
tell you my thought process, um, which is to uh, look at how frequently each alien comes. This one's coming every three seconds. This one's coming one second later than this one, which is also every three seconds. It's just offset by one second. So if we think of it in terms of counting seconds, I get a red. I get my center red alien on one. I get my upper red alien on two, and I get my lower red alien on three. So it's a pattern one, two, three, one, two, three, middle, upper, lower, middle, upper, lower. They're each coming every three seconds. There's just an offset between them. So with that insight, I was able to go into game functions and spawn my three red aliens each every three seconds one of them 100 pixels above, one of them 100 pixels below, and then I just used an additional timer to delay the upper alien by one second and to delay the lower alien by two seconds. So now I have my upper alien coming every three seconds, my, my middle alien coming every three seconds, my upper alien coming every three seconds but delayed by one second, and my lower alien coming every three seconds delayed by two seconds. And this should produce the desired effect. And as I say, there's more than one way to solve this problem. But that's, that was my thought process in solving it, and there are, other, there are other valid solutions. So let's look at what our next step is. No more than five red aliens can exist at once. And this is five points, because this is important for you to get to. If you can keep only three bullets on the screen, you should be able to keep only five red aliens on the screen. It's the same, it's the same concept. So again, we need just like we have a bullet count, we need an integer red alien. Red aliens, I'll call it. And every time a red alien comes into being, I can change attribute red aliens to red aliens plus one. And since I'm putting this not inside a rule, but just as a behavior inside my red alien prototype, every time the red alien is created, this will happen once. The other place I could have put this, and it's equally valid to do so, is inside each game function. Each time I spawn one, I increase the red alien count by one. And the only difference is I have to do it three times. But again, it's a perfectly fine solution. And in computing, there's always more than one way to do something. So either I could put this once inside the red alien itself, or I can put it inside of each timer after the spawn actor. Absolutely equivalent. So how do I ensure that there are no more than five on the screen? Well, I can add a rule. Every three seconds, spawn the actor unless there's already five on the screen. So I can take my spawn actor and my change attribute and put them inside a rule. So every three seconds, evaluate this rule. If red aliens is less than five, then make me a new one and increase the alien count. And I'll put this rule inside each one of my timers every three seconds if my red alien count is less than five, make one, and finally in the third rule, every three seconds if my 
red alien count is less than five. Then make a new alien, and this should limit our number of aliens to five. Alien count goes up to one, two, three, four, five, and no more are created because we now no longer satisfy the rule if alien count is less than five. So here's where I need to put this wall over here as well and tell the red alien that should it collide with the wall to destroy itself. But just before it does, to change the red alien count to one less than its current value. We call this decrementing. I'm going to decrement. We increment to make things go up. We decrement to make things go down. Red alien minus one. So now we'll make five. And then the process stops until one dies by hitting the wall, which makes space for a new red alien to spawn. And thereby the process goes on. Of course, saving my work. This is an error that some of you made um, with all computing, whether you're writing a paper, composing music, creating a game, creating a video, you want to make sure you save your work as you go so that if the computer crashes, because computers do crash, software crashes, software gets weird bugs in it, you just want to have a recent backup copy. Some programs will autosave for you, um, but I say don't trust it. You know, you should explicitly save a copy every so often, um, maybe even under a new name so that if you mess up and you want to go back to an earlier point in your work, you can go back to an earlier saved copy. So let's take a look at the next thing we're being asked here. No more than five aliens can exist at once. Five points, yay, just got five points. Red aliens accelerate to the left, already did that. Shooting a red alien increases the score by one. And as it says above, red aliens are destroyed by bullets. I didn't deal with that yet. So uh, now we need to incorporate the concept of score, which again is gonna be another game level attribute. It's an integer, and we'll call it score. And as always, I'm putting my own attributes in all capital letters so that they're easy for me to find and recognize when I want to get to them. Uh, so let's see what needs to happen here. When a red alien overlaps or collides with a bullet, then it's destroyed. But just before it's destroyed, we're going to increase the score attribute by 1. And what else needs to happen? Uh, the bullet needs to be destroyed when it collides with the red alien. And um, we can do that. We can just add that to here. We can say when any of these conditions are valid, when either it overlaps or collides with a wall or it overlaps or collides with a red alien. Then the bullet count is decreased and the actor is destroyed. Uh, some of you have been using uh, actor receives a mouse position. We haven't talked about that. Um, so if you find yourself with a rule that says actor receives event mouse position is inside, maybe you don't need a rule at all. If you don't know exactly why you're, if you can't speak the if then statement that necessitates the rule, you might not need a rule. We say if the actor collides with a wall or if the actor collides with a red then do these things. If you can't articulate it as an if-then statement, then maybe the rule is just not necessary. Uh, let's see, going on here. Green alien is created every eight seconds. 
Lovely. And the green alien moves quickly but does not accelerate. Okay, so that would be a change velocity situation. So let's do those two steps. Um, so we're saying in game functions, using another timer, every eight seconds. Oh, I don't think we've actually made the green alien yet, so let's make the green alien. There's the green alien. We'll change the size down to something reasonable, and we'll remove the redness and the blueness to make our alien a lovely shade of green. It's not really a lovely shade of green. Uh, and then name this alien green, and in the game functions, every eight seconds, we're going to spawn actor green. Where? Um, we'll do it 40 pixels to the left of game functions, and that should work. And then our green alien moves quickly but does not accelerate, so we'll use a change velocity uh, direction 180 degrees, which means to the left, and speed 300. That's pretty fast. Let's see how that works. Second, two, three, four, five, six, uh, eight. Okay, I'll say yes to that. Now, shooting a green alien decreases its greenness by one quarter. And when the greenness reaches zero, we destroy it and we get 10 points. Nice. Okay, so our green alien, if it collides with a bullet, not a wall, a bullet, then we're going to change its greenness attribute. Uh, greens color green to green color green minus 0 0.25 and it dies when green reaches 0 so we'll make another rule that says when the attribute greens color green equals 0 then destroy it as always, just before we destroy it, or just above on the screen, because things execute from top to bottom, <clears throat> we're going to uh, change the score attribute game score to game score plus 10. And also, uh, because we don't want these green actors running off into infinity, I'm also going to destroy them when they hit a wall. I'm not sure that I actually specify that that needs to happen uh, in my instructions, but it's just something I know should happen. I don't want these aliens, I don't want the computer keeping track of these aliens that are off the screen, because after a time that's gonna, that's gonna strain the computer needing to keep track of objects that really have no relevance and will never again have any relevance uh, to the to the game. But I don't want to gain any points uh, when the aliens are destroyed in this way. So that's why it's a separate rule. I'm not adding it uh, as part of the this rule um, that destroys it and increases the score by 10. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, oh, if a green alien runs into a red alien, it goes around it. This one's five points, so we know that this is important. Why? Well, because it's a concept I want us to transfer from the tutorial. When a green alien collides with a red alien, it goes around. And there's, uh, again, many ways to do this. You could think of this in a lot of different ways. Uh, the way I thought of it... Uh, is hopefully the way that you thought of it because it was the way presented in the tutorial. I changed an attribute. I changed its vertical position on the screen, or its y, to a value that would cause it to go around the red alien it's colliding with. So move it down by 60 pixels, let's say, and we'll see what that does. So my reds come along.
Hmm, that's perhaps too much. Uh, when I put it, I'll put it below. I'm going to say minus 60 pixels. And where am I spawning this green? I'm spawning it uh, f uh, 40 pixels to the left. That's not what I meant. I wanted to do it. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. 40 pixels to the left. Correct. Yeah, so let's see what's happening here. Ah, I see it's hitting both of those. I'm going to make uh, green a little smaller. Make it 40 by 40. Make my reds a little smaller too, just so this is all fitting on my screen a little bit better. And when the green collides with the red, I'm going to have it move down 50 pixels. Let's see what happens. Yes, the green hits the red and moves under it. We're not really seeing it happen yet. We should see it this time. The green comes to life. Boom, it goes around the red. Yes, very nice. Let's watch it one more time just to make sure it's happening in a consistent fashion. Yes, every time green collides with red, it Y jumps down and it goes around the red. Let's see what else. Uh, aliens are destroyed when they leave the screen. Uh, I did that. Let me double check that I actually did that for red. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, yes, collides with type wall. Decrease the number of red aliens, destroy the actor. Okay, the score is displayed in the lower right corner of the screen. So inside our game functions, we will display text. What's the text we're going to display? Is the game level attribute score. Uh, we're going to put it in color. And we want it in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. So game functions is on the right-hand edge. So I'm going to display our score 50 pixels to the left of game functions and let's say 200, mm, 150 pixels below. Let's see where that puts it. Right there in the corner. That's too much in the corner. Uh, so I'm going to say 100 pixels to the left and 150 pixels below. There, that's a nice place for the score. And let's see if our game is working. When I shoot a red, score goes up by one. When I shoot a green, ooh, I didn't get them that time. The score should go up by 10. Come on, green, there you go. And the score goes up by 10, lovely. Okay, so what is still missing? Uh, score is displayed. If the alien hits a hero, game over is displayed on the screen. If the alien hits the hero, the her hero can no longer move or shoot. Ooh, and each one of these is worth five points. They're both important. Okay, so um, display game over on the screen. Let's take a look at that. So if an alien hits the hero, so let's go to the hero and say, if you overlap or collide with the red alien, or if any of these conditions are valid, overlap or collide with the red, or overlap or collide with the green, um, okay, I can do this a couple of different ways. I can put the display text right here. over, and I can put it, uh, let's say, 50 pixels to the right of my hero. So when the hero gets destroyed, oh, we see game over. Now, then it disappears. Why? 
because it only the text only appears when this rule is satisfied. So only during the collision with red or green will it display game over. Instead, we can go for a more persistent approach. We can create an attribute. And this attribute doesn't have to be game level. This attribute is just, just going to be for our hero. And it's a Boolean. And we'll call it game over. And we'll, when this happens, when this collision happens, we'll change the attribute, the game over attribute, to true. So change attribute game over to 1, which is the same as true. 1 is true, yes, 1. 0 is 0, false, no, when you're dealing with Booleans. And then we'll put our display text inside a rule that says if the attribute game over is true, then show this text. And it's not going to get more true with each collision. And we, don't, we haven't set up anything that makes it less true when the collision ends. So after the first collision, game over will become 1, and it will stay 1. Therefore, the text will remain on the screen. I'll put this text further to the right, even further, 120 pixels to the right of my hero. Boom, game over. Nice. But I can still move and I can still shoot. So now I need to disable this ability to move and shoot. Because it says if the alien hits the hero, the hero can no longer move or shoot. And again, five points. This is important. So how do I do that? Well, I already have a game over attribute. So I can, in my move rules, I can say not only when the W keyboard, the W key is pressed on the keyboard, but also when the attribute game over is false. In other words, when the game's not over yet and the W key is pressed, then I can move. And I can apply that here for the S key as well. When all these conditions are met, when the S key is pressed and the game over attribute is false, then I can move down. And similarly, in my shoot rule, now I have three conditions here. When the space bar, space bar is pressed, and when the bullet count is less than three, and when the game is not over, then I can shoot. So let's see if that works. Do -do, do -do, do -do. I can shoot, I can move, but when I die, I can no longer move, and I can no longer shoot. Lovely. Great, I think I've done it all. Ah, and then the bonus. When the hero dies, make him turn gray. Five point bonus. Juicy bonus. I'm going to go for it. Uh, so, well, here is where our hero dies, and we change the game over attribute to one and we've used that in several places. And now we can also change the color to gray. And since uh, our hero is white, or actually light gray, um, changing to a darker gray means reducing the red, green, and blue values by the same amount. So uh, our hero is called m2.inv because I forgot to rename him. Uh, so we'll change the red to 0.5. We'll change the green to 0.5, and we'll change the blue to 0.5. And this is something that uh, I wanted to include in this because now that you know that you can do things like change attribute self dot color dot red to attribute self.color.red minus 0 
that's fine. That means each time this rule is met, the redness will decrease by 0.5. That's not where we're going here. We want the first time there's a collision, the game is over, our hero's dead, and he becomes gray. So we're just setting this value directly to 0.5. And I, I like to put 0 0.5. It, this, it's the same, but it's just a little bit clearer, I think, to, to have it be 0 0.5. So now I should have a complete and happy game. I can move, I can shoot. If I shoot the green actor four times, I didn't make it. Oh no, restart my game. This time I'll get the green. Come on, green. Oh no. Maybe I maybe I have an error there. Let me try it one more time. One bullet gets rid of a red. Hmm. All right, let's take a look. What is my issue here? First of all, I think my bullet is not being destroyed when it overlaps with a green. Ah, okay. That's why I don't have enough bullets to get it. So when my bullet collides with a wall, or when it collides with a red, or when it collides with a green, it's destroyed and the bullet count is reduced. Good. And just to make sure my rules of my green are correct, uh, when its greenness reaches zero, increase the score by 10, destroy the actor. Great. Let's try it now. See if we're happening. And four bullets. Yes! Got him. And the score went up by 10. Nice. Excellent. Nice playable. Playable game. And when I die, ooh, I die, I turn gray, and I can't move. So there it is. Um, that is uh, one solution. Uh, and probably the solution that's closest to what was presented in the last tutorial of the assignment from this week. I uh, hope you found that useful, and thanks for watching.